Hello everyone, this is Frank Gamer, once again on voice chat. Today my guest is Paul from Super Positive. Um, I know you are very familiar with the Banjo-Kazooie games specifically. Mm -hmm. Well, today we are talking about Yooka Lele. Which oh my just heart. Been, yeah, just financed on Kickstarter. I heard it was like 40 minutes and the whole thing got financed. Uh, 40 to 38 to 40, yeah. 38 Gosh. to 40 minutes. I mean, I guess there's a real passion for that kind of game now. I mean, this is sort of your prophecy fulfilled, isn't it? It's funny because, like, as soon as I saw the Kickstarter go up, because I was one of the first adopters, I was one of the early adopters. Hmm. I, uh, it had only been like two, three minutes after it opened up, and I already kickstarted it. So I was one of the first people to help it get there. That's kind of awesome, actually. It really is. I, I feel proud about that. <laughs> <laughs> so, but um, here's the thing, though. Uh, a lot of people are saying, you know, this is obviously Banjo-Kazooie, right? That's what they're saying. Um, do you think this is the Banjo 3 that everybody wanted? Hmm. Now, that is an interesting question, because when looking at uh, ukulele... Mm -hmm. there, there, obviously, there's a lot of simul similarities. Like, first off, the title and how they're named after instruments. Banjo-Kazooie yeah. and ukulele. Uh, Banjo-Kazoo-Ukulele. Uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. So, obviously, there's a simul similarities. They are not at all, like, trying to hide the fact that they're uh, influenced by their previous work. Certainly, and then they have Grant... Uh, Grant Kirkhope is back doing the uh, oh my god music, which is amazing. I love, yeah. I love Grant Kirkhope. He, I have, I mean, just so much respect for the man. A gigantic it's, man crush, it sounds like. But you know, I would let him have my children <laughs> <laughs> if he could. I don't know. We'll see. But you know, I don't know. I think he's secretly a woman, but but we'll we'll, <laughs> we'll, we'll refrain from any further comments at this point. Yeah, he no, he's he's amazing, and I think it's a I think it's really cool that all of these things are coming together in that game, and I think mm -hmm. that's why that's part of the reason it got financed so quickly. But do you think part of that was because people were so disappointed with nuts and bolts? Yes, <laughs> definitely. Uh, Banjo Kazooie Nuts and Bolts was a big disappointment to a lot of people, especially anybody who was waiting for a Banjo 3E. Hmm. So it 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 kind of makes sense that like when the old developers from Rareware all come together and decide to make a new product that is inspired by its uh obviously its roots like Banjo Kazooie. Mm -hmm. Or uh maybe DK sixty four, because I think that was also made by Rareware, wasn't it? Yes, I think it yes it was. <clears throat> when when they're like influenced by their older work in order to actually make a brand new collectathon, I think that definitely had some influence on it. Mm. But mainly, I've, I I think this entire experiment, or well, experiment, I think this entire Kickstarter pro project shows that there's still an interest, a, a very clear interest in the collectathon. Oh yeah, and it plays to the whole nostalgic thing that people are so hyped up for, you know? Everybody mm -hmm. loves the nostalgia train. They really do. They all jump on it and they all join the join <laughs> join in on it. So I think this really plays to that whole nostalgia thing, plus the desire for a Banjo Kazooie game, which I mean, for some reason they're not making. Uh, there was See, yeah, there was that one. Uh, what was it? Uh, they no 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 no. I'm I'm sorry. I'm thinking of Conquer's Bad Fur Day. Yeah, they <laughs> ended up incorporating that for uh, that. Project Spark uh, or whatever. Yeah, it was Project Spark. That was one of the worst teases yeah. that E3 ever did. Yeah, because that's <laughs> that was a good opportunity they had to do the same kind of thing, you know, to build off that nostalgia. But instead, they decided, oh well, we'll just put Conquer in Project Spark. Now you can do whatever you want. I don't. We don't care. That's essentially what they said. That is by far one of the worst uses of an IP I have ever seen. Oh yeah. You know what's interesting? Um, speaking of, because I believe that's Microsoft. Speaking of Microsoft, do you think mm -hmm. they're going to allow this to go through? Because, I mean, it basically is Banjo-Kazooie, and they own the rights to it now. Uh, I don't think they really have too much of a fight 
to 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 make in court. It the, technically they do not own the rights to the collectathon, obviously. <laughs> um, sure, they have their similarities, and it makes a lot of nostalgic references, I guess. Right. But I, I imagine there's going to be a few where they're going to be uh, referencing like Banjo Kazooie or something like that, but. I don't think uh, Microsoft is on any legal ground to actually take down the project. Huh. The project is should be a okay. Yeah, I you know I'd agree with that. I mean, basically, it's the same. It's a similar concept, but that concept has been around for years, so it's not like it's that one game they're ripping off. You know. Yeah. Otherwise, they would have probably taken legal grounds against Ahead in Time, which I don't think they have. <laughs> yeah, so. that's true. And then, uh, I don't know, the thing the thing that gets me, though, is it, it is very, very similar to Banjo-Kazooie. So you, you could almost say that it has the look and feel of it, which is an argument that, like, Apple has made for some of their stuff in the past. But I don't know if Microsoft wants to emulate Apple, you know, in, in their lawsuits. So, who knows? Uh, no, I... I, I... I feel like Microsoft's a bit smarter than that, but who knows? <laughs> Maybe later down the, down the line they'll surprise me. Right. <laughs> surprise you with their greed. Oh, boy. I, I can just see the headlines now. Ukulele getting sued for being Banjo-Kazooie. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the interesting thing is, um, oh. speaking of Banjo-Kazooie, do you think that this is going to impact any future Banjo-Kazooie games? As in, will this sort of delay or, or stop any Banjo-Kazooie games from coming out? No. Hmm. And if anything, this is going to influence them to come out more. Because the Kickstarter has already shown us. We are recording this the day after the Kickstarter went up, which right. is like the 2nd of May. Okay. Mm -hmm. So it's already raised over um, $1.5 million? Uh, something like that. I haven't checked recently. It's... I think it's over 1.5 million right now, if not already 2 million. Hmm. So I think, if anything, uh, higher developers up there are going to notice. Yeah. Like, it raised nearly 2 million within two days. So, <laughs> and the Kickstarter still has, like, if I can recall, like 40 days left. Yeah, <laughs> to so they have, they have plenty of time to... Make up more funds. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And so also, you think this is a big signal to Microsoft? Hey, there's a there's a market out there for this. Mm -hmm. I think that's going to be a very big signal to a lot of companies and developers that are just like, oh, hey, maybe we should make a collectathon, you know, with <laughs> that dead IP that we have in the closet. <laughs> well, it's sort of like Nintendo revisited Donkey Kong Country on the Wii, I mean, or Wii U, because they saw that there was a market for it, so they released it. So I mean, it is possible. I mean, maybe you'll get another Bubsy 3D. Who knows? Woo! <laughs> I so, would totally be down for a Bubsy, uh, a Bubsy Wii U. Let's do this. <laughs> are you serious? Like you really would? <laughs> I want to see if the game would actually be good. I don't. I don't I think there's it. any world I where it would be good. <laughs> <laughs> I sincerely doubt it, but I want to see a good Bubsy game. Hmm. Please, let's kickstart Bubsy. <laughs> so you mentioned you mentioned a hat in time, and I'm glad you did. Do you okay. think that there this is a collectathon revolution with more and more games coming out? I think the collectathon is definitely getting its uh its reputation back where <laughs> it was just sort of like a very beloved franchise and it still is. Yeah. It's a very beloved genre and I I personally am excited for both of them. I mean, just today, I pre-ordered A Hat in Time and got the beta out <laughs> access. <laughs> and now I'm just waiting for the email that tells me, all right, you can now play our alpha. <laughs> That's pretty cool, actually. Yeah, it, it really is. I'm, I'm going to be super excited. I might record a video and just upload it to a random channel. <laughs> you should, because that would, that would be awesome. Because like that's I, that's your thing, you know. You've been really big about it, so <laughs> I mean, 
Yeah, I mean, this is the second video I've done with you where I've talked about the collectathon, and that's not even including the Skype calls we had to work on my own personal projects, like yeah. my collectathon video, which you guys can all see by pressing the thing in the description below. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm definitely going to put a link to it. I'll probably put a card, too, up in the top when it pops up. Woo! But, uh, yeah, it's... I don't know. Do you think that nostalgia is really the driving factor for this? Nostalgia? Yes, definitely. There has to... Especially for uh, uh, ukulele, because <laughs> ukulele in particular, their slogan is a rare vival. <laughs> and wow. that... That okay. That is one thing that Microsoft could potentially take action against. Yeah, yeah, I could see that. <laughs> I could see that. Um, but but you know how how far can nostalgia really take them? I mean, is is it going to make a, an entire franchise out of this? Is that the goal? I I have no idea. I don't think that uh, these games are going to get too far. Like, hmm. I, I like as sad as that is, and as much as that hurts me, but like. <laughs> Well, jeez. It's like, I love the collectathon. Yeah. And, and a lot of people know that I do. <laughs> but at the same time, like, I feel if there's too many, it'll eventually go stale. Yeah, I can see that. Do you get the idea? Like, yeah, because it's, like, it's my... like the 3D platformer when, when they were just coming out. Everybody made a 3D platformer and they started to suck. Mm-hmm. Same kind Bubsy. of thing. If if this sort of takes <laughs> off and people jump on the nostalgia train again, start releasing games with collectathon, you know, mechanics. It's going yeah. to, It's not just going to get stale. It's going to get um, horribly made, <laughs> and then you're going to have terrible games coming out that that are called collectathons, and they're not really going to work well. I don't. But know. that's the nature of the games industry. To be oh, entirely yeah. honest with you, yeah. That's and, true. I want to see ukulele be very successful, and the Kickstarter has. Hmm. And I'm so glad the Kickstarter has, because I just want to see the game flourish and grow and to show the world, like, yes, we still want collectathons. Like, that is something we need. Microsoft, get on Banjo 3. <laughs> yeah, yeah I, could, I could tell you're passionate about this. That's, that's the thing. Woo! Yeah, yeah I'm so passionate. It's... <laughs> the best thing ever and I, I I really want to just have more collectathons out there because I want to enjoy more of them <laughs> that, that, that might be a selfish reason but so, at the so, same time like I don't want to see a genre that was so prominent in the N64 era just not exist anymore yeah that's fair and I, I could see that uh, be be completely honest, though. Um, how many times have you played Banjo Kazooie? Five times through completion. <laughs> oh my gosh, that's that's well, much that's, more. Yeah, that's much more than I have. Well, that's uh, that's a very like. I love playing through Banjo Kazooie. It's one mm. of the one of the better games out there. So for you, ukulele is probably crack, is what you're telling me. It is my cocaine, yes. <laughs> <laughs> so but, before, hey, before we close out, is there anything you wanted to say about this? I think that ukulele is going to be an extremely successful project, and once it releases in 2016, I am definitely going to have to make just a metric ton of video content <laughs> for it. Yeah, yeah, because I, I look forward to that because that'll that'll be very interesting to see. I'm just going to tear that game apart. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's going to be fun. It's yeah, I, yeah, I, I will, you know, I I will probably hear about this several times from you <laughs> before it comes out because woo! I'm sure you will be extremely hyped up before it comes out, right? Yep. I mean, I, I'm not the only one who think it was going to be that hyped up. I mean, if you just look at the Kickstarter, like, holy snap. You're right. I've seen all the news, you know, all the gaming news sites have been covering it. So, it, I mean, there is a there is a market for it, obviously. A very big market. And ukulele has definitely left its impact. And I think 
that developers are going to take notice very soon if they haven't already. So well, yeah, I I mean that's going to be good when it finally comes out. Then, assuming Microsoft doesn't screw it up. <laughs> you guys liked cars in your Banjo Kazooie, right? <laughs> <laughs> hey, let's make uh, let's make a fat bear instead of uh, you know Banjo the way it was. Let's let's just make him fat. That's what we'll do. <laughs> That's how we'll oh. start the game. Oh boy. That's and just like... make a bunch of humor to the older titles. <laughs> I suppose if you can call it humor. They're all washed up. I just up I there. just can't believe that the game started by insulting the old games, basically. That's essentially it what did. they did. That was one of the most horrible portions of that game. Oh yeah. Oh, definitely. And it started off. It started off on a very good foot. Let, let me just tell you. <laughs> <laughs> well, anyways, we'll go ahead and end with that. I want to thank Super Positive, aka Paul, for being here. Yay! <laughs> Make sure to check out his channel. He uh, has a video on collectathons. I will leave a link in the description if you want to check it out. I really need to make more videos on collectathons. <laughs> yeah, I, it is so fascinating to me because it really isn't covered anymore these days. So, you know, I so... just I need to make so much coverage <laughs> of the collectathon just so that people identify me as that collectathon guy. <laughs> oh, you're you're that collectathon guy. <laughs> yeah. Yes. It, yeah. Yes, definitely I check am. him out, though. All viewers at home or on the internet. A video might be coming out soon, so... <laughs> Once again, this was Voice Chat. I am Frank Gamer. Thank you for watching. <laughs>